first rule of podcasting. Make sure the mic's on. This is this is like a Michael Scott, like the five rules of podcasting. Rule number two. Never let someone walk in between you and the camera. Welcome to episode 71 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. I am Paul J. Daly, and as you can see, I'm in the middle of, well, if you don't know, it's O'Hare International Airport. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. So today, I want to talk about short-term gains over a long term, I don't know, what was I gonna say? I had it all typed out. Not typed out, I had a note. And now the fact that I'm worried about getting arrested or shut down, it's all up in my head. Oh yeah, so I wanna talk about long-term health over short-term gains. And I'm looking around as we're walking through, it's, it's a lot less crowded than it's been. We've been posted up at the airport for a little bit and there's just thousands of people walking around and everyone is on their phone. Everyone is connecting somewhere with something. Their attention is somewhere. They're connecting with friends or family. They're connecting with maybe businesses, probably not entertainment, maybe. Yes, uh, politics, all types of things. They're just connecting and it's a highly interruptible environment and you know how it is we all do it on our phones and we're always scrolling we're always following the white rabbit we're always following chasing a little squirrel notification that pops up we're doing all types of things like that and it's really got me thinking as you're in the midst of all these thousands of people and you're seeing them in the back here and they're paying attention to things how are you connecting with them on a regular basis are you doing the macro strategies that make it that make it a part that make your brand and make your initiative or your organization or your purpose or your meaning that make it a part of their lives, a part of their regular lives. And they think, oh, well, people like me do things like that, connect with brands like that, connect with organizations like that. Are you doing that? Or are you just addicted to the tactics of blood pressure medication? I'm going to make the change now and feel good about myself because I've done something good for my business. What are we actually paying attention to that's the truth, right? You're doing little things in your life that convince you that you're macro happy. How many people convince themselves that they're being productive or convince yourself that you're making really good decisions because you've done something small? Instead of doing something macro, it convinces you that you have, you're executing well to a macro in your life, but actually you just maybe had a little win. So like for instance, if you buy your wife flowers, right? Because maybe it makes her smile if she's in the flowers. It makes you feel good because you did something nice, but you're not emotionally there for her in your relationship and your relationship is broken, right? You just convince yourself you're doing something good, but really you're doing something bad. You know, you buy your kids ice cream because you feel bad that you weren't there for them. I mean, I guess I'm getting super, super deep on that because I know some of that stuff hits really close to home. Um, You ate a salad, so you feel like, hey, I just just executed to a really healthy thing for me, but then you go eat a box of donuts. You know, these are things that I think we do naturally to us as humans, you know, just because we're human to justify things to ourselves. And I'll tell you a personal story. So I went to the doctor, I don't know, it was probably a year, year and a half ago. And they told me my blood pressure was high to which I responded. The thing that you respond, you say, well, obviously your machine is broken because my blood pressure isn't high. And I know that's what everybody says, you know, so it was borderline high and they start talking about blood pressure medication and I'm like, no, I'm not a medication person. I'm not taking medication. I'll do what else I have to do to manage that. So it talks about managing stress and managing diet and exercise. And it really has become this foundational um, example that I use because blood pressure medication doesn't make you healthy. It doesn't. It is a tactic that makes your blood pressure go down. But the second you stop taking the blood pressure medication, what happens? It's like your blood pressure goes back up. Why? Because you didn't really make any strategic changes in your life that are going to stop your blood pressure from escalating. Maybe you're stressed out of your mind. Maybe you're eating nothing but garbage. Maybe your body, uh uh-oh, eyebrows up. Am I going to get run over? Oh, we almost had a collision. That would have been so funny because he didn't see it coming and I did. Levi's, I saw it in Levi's eyes. I saw it in the whites of his eyes. So the tactic of blood pressure medication doesn't make you any healthier. What's the strategy? It's like, well, the strategy is the fact that you eat right and you exercise and you do things like that. Then all of a sudden, guess what? Your blood pressure goes down. Why does your blood pressure go down? Well, because you actually execute to a strategy. So when we're talking about brand versus sales, this is where I naturally go with that. So two things. Number one, 
think about it. It's just something worth thinking about in your life because as I'm saying through these things, I know things are popping up in your mind that you're like, okay, I could do a little better at this. I could execute to a macro strategy. I'm lying to myself, convincing myself that I'm doing better than I actually am because it's how I justify things. Let's pivot that for a second and talk business, branding, sales, et cetera. Brand building activity, brand building activity, as you see all these people on their phones, is things that are convincing them and showing them how you understand who they are, what they care about, what's relevant to them, and you connect your brand with those people. So when you do that, guess what? Long-term activities, that's eating right and exercising. You're constantly doing the work to make your way into the psyche of all these people who are constantly connected and constantly distractible, but you're making it make sense to them. I've seen that as one of the most ignored elements in all of business across all industries, all industries. I think the industry that probably gets it best is fashion, like lifestyle brands. They market their clothes and uh, their textiles in the sense that like, hey, the kind of people that buy this type of thing or the people that have great lives like this or the people that are into this, I use it all the time. Yeti Coolers is an amazing example. It's a cooler company that markets like a fashion lifestyle brand. And even though I don't ride my dirt bike through the Mojave Desert, right, I own a $400 cooler that sits by my pool and it works. Why? Because they've become a brand company and not a sales company and not really many sales on a Yeti cooler. So that's the point. It's what I'm thinking about today um, as I'm trying to think about not getting run into the McDonald's line. It's a busy McDonald's. You can show it. <laughs> so again, thinking about am I doing short term tax, uh, short term taxes, these short term little health things over long term gains? Am I sacrificing that? So think about it in your personal life. Think about it in your business life and your brand life. I think I've just about run out of runway. We got people, <laughs> people are photobombing. That's amazing. I hope we get a lot of good photobombs. Um, so obviously I'm a little distracted, but I wanted to share this with you. I wanted to record it before I get out of the airport because I just do think it brings some good value from a, a case study standpoint. And I'm just a very first person seeing everybody on their phones, seeing everybody wandering to and fro, distractible, distracted. We got kids singing, we got all kinds of stuff. And if you want to make long-term change, you have to think long-term. It's like kind of a simple principle. If you want to make long-term change, you have to think long-term. So that's it. It's episode 71 coming at you from Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. I have a flight to catch. Levi's arm is tired from holding the camera. And uh, this will be one for the record book. 71. Talk to you soon. And I think it deserves the fact to say Levi just made that happen. He took all the funny looks and all the photo bombers. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> And by the way, I forgot to say, thank you for paying attention and listening to the podcast or the video or however else you connect with me. Um, I put out a lot of content on all the platforms and you never know what you're going to get. So thank you. I hope you found at least a little bit of a smile uh, because of this and uh, keep trying new things. Talk to you guys.